Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today is a little vest pocket video and what I'd like to do is to look at three different kinds of constant force uh, in mechanical watches. Now the problem with constant force is, or in mechanical constant force, are two things. Um, one is the difficulty in doing them, and two, for at least for us collectors, is the expense. So, <laughs> bear that in mind. Um, however, the first one is probably one of the, uh, one of the very complex ones, but it's a lot more common now, and it was built, uh, originally for pocket watches. Uh, this is a tourbillon, and what a tourbillon does is that Abraham Breguet uh, discovered that here you have with a pocket watch, if you have it in your pocket, it's in one thing, and so gravity is going to distort it in one direction. And by moving it around, uh, you could sort of offset that. And uh, that's... I I think for a for a pocket watch that made a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense for a wristwatch. So nevertheless, uh, something that they they wanted to do. Now this is my tourbillon that I uh, that I actually made myself. <laughs> I made I didn't make the movement. I bought the movement uh, from this. Uh, outfit in China through AliExpress. It cost me 114 bucks, and uh, this is about the only one I could afford. But it works exactly like a tourbillon is supposed to work, and that is, it moves the the balance around so that it's not pulled in one direction. Uh, the one on the left is a Laurent Ferrier caliber LF69 61901. This one was a winner of the 2023 Tourbillon category at the Grand Prix de Royal J. de Genève, 175,000 Swiss francs, which is, <laughs> oh, I don't know, about $180,000. Most Tourbillon watches are just incredibly expensive, and I, I, I know that there are ones like, like this that you can you can find if you if you want to put them together yourself 114 bucks is what i could afford on this one but what it what it does it simply distributes the pull of gravity on it important for a pocket watch not so much for a, a wrist watch now the next one is a rheumatoid galate which is my very favorite and what it does is that when your watch unwinds, it at first it has a lot of power and then it sort of follows a curve, something like that. And so what a rim and taw does um, is that in order to keep everything at an equal is that it rewinds this little, a little spring called a rim and taw, and so with each rewind, it has a fresh amount of power to it. Now, the it's it's a it's not a simple one, believe me. And uh, this I I don't have any watch with a rim and taw Galate. I wish I did. A couple of them, uh, very nice ones. Uh, F. P. Jorn is a one second rim and taw, and it has one at at eleven o'clock. There's a um, where they have it on that, you'll see a little window with this thing that looks like a little uh, buzz saw. Uh, there's another one by Gronfeld, uh, and it's the name of the watch is the 1941 Rem and Constant Force. Same kind of thing, and it's got a, a little bigger Rem and spring. You can see it over there on that. It's got the main spring, has a Rem and spring, and then it's got a hairspring on the balance wheel. So this is a fairly complex thing, uh, but it does work. And it just, <laughs> there are very few of them and they're very, very expensive, unfortunately. You can figure spending minimum of around 50,000, maybe 40,000 on one of those. Now the final one 
is another favorite of mine. This is dual barrels in parallel. What they do in order to maintain constant force and to help out, they have two barrels and both of the same barrels are working simultaneously to provide power for a single a single watch or say a single timekeeping. Uh, here are a couple here. One is a Schwartz ETN. It's called the MSC 100. Uh, and it's I, this is one with this double barrel in parallel. Now, most barrels you'll find are in sequence. And the reason that they're in sequence is for to have a longer uh, reserve. So if you have uh, two barrels uh, in sequence or serial, uh, one will as soon as one is finished, the other one will kick in, and so it'll sort of double your uh, exposure. With barrels in parallel, they're working at the same time together, and usually you don't get much more uh, mileage out of a, a double hairspring, but what you get is you get a much, the both barrels are working on the, on the gear train to give it a more even flow. So those are three mechanical uh, constant force mechanisms and you might want to look into one or more of them and there's always the option of doing finding a do-it-yourself that you can put together for uh, very affordable anyway let me know what you think uh and this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like until next time this is bill sanders for watch art side the art and science of watch collections